Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stand back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something, hey, baby. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> y'all hear the voice. That means my dog, Big Nate Dog, is in the building with me today. What's up with you, baby? Hey, uh, you know what? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited because, and I'm jumping the gun. What's got you giddy, Nate? The Cowboys did not uh-huh. get a first day signing. Okay. But they got a second day signing. Okay. And... I don't know if it was a signing or it was a trade. You'll tell us whether it was a signing or a trade. <laughs> but we got two legit players yeah. early in free agency. And yeah. Isaiah tell us all about Proven. it. Proven. Proven. First of all, let's take let's take everybody, everybody listening. Take a second and clap it up for the front office yes. of the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all know we, we talk about Cowboys a lot because we just we're in Dallas. We got ties to Dallas. We played in Dallas, all those Dallas. Okay, so we're gonna talk some Cowboys all the time. Why you ain't got on a Cowboy? Oh, you talking about all this right here? Yeah, why you? Oh, hold on. Let me flip this around for you, too, for those that are watching. Oh, man. That's for those, good. That, are, for what those is that? that are watching, y'all see the S what, on my Suzuki? hat. That's Suzuki? Yeah, no, ain't no dog on Suzuki. <laughs> they had a business. Listen here. This is the Seattle Kraken. And this what? is for love. Now, the time of this filming, last night, uh, I took my daughter. My daughter turned 11. Okay. okay and okay. I promised my little man his uh, for Christmas, I was going to take him to a hockey game. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Seattle Kraken versus Dallas Stars. You know if Seattle's in the building. I got to right. be there. Nate. That's right. That's right? right. So, I'm in there rocking my Seattle gear. Okay, I got my, my inaugural Seattle jersey on. Wow. Okay, yeah, I got my daughters rocking the hat. My little man got the hoodie on. Right. We're representing. We're three rows up. Oh, yeah, we three rows up, wow. mate. Right in the mix. And everybody in that section knew that we was repping for Seattle. That's and it right. caused a lot of confusion, Nate. It caused a lot of confusion because <laughs> a lot of people who, 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 I don't know how people even know notice who I am. I ain't All nobody. Right. But for the people that, that feel like I'm somebody and they came up and said something, they were like, I thought you was a Dallas fan. I was like, I love Dallas. Right. But what's home? Seattle's home, man. That's right. I don't forget where I come from. Okay. So when my city show up, I got to show out. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? And they took care of business last night. Well, what happened? They won the game overtime. Overtime. They played two games last week in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dallas took the first, uh, first game went to overtime. Dallas won. Right. Okay. The second game, Dallas blew Seattle out. Whoa. Now, yeah. And then they came down here, obviously, right. um, on um, on was this a Tuesday night? Okay. And went head to head. Seattle had a, a nice two point lead, two goal lead for most of the game. Dallas came back, sent it to overtime with point seven seconds left. Wow. Scored a goal with point seven seconds left. Sent it to overtime. Overtime, we went down there, <laughs> saw somebody up, gave that boy the ooh wee. <laughs> we chucked the deuces and walked up out of that piece. You know, we was turned. So Man. Seattle stand up, Dallas. You know you my number two team. Okay, Dallas, Dallas Stars. You're my number two team. Lud, I know you ain't gonna like that, but you know I'm from Seattle, so you gotta respect that. Uh, other than that, though, let's get back to these Cowboys. Listen up. Yeah, yeah. Dallas Cowboys made some moves, Nate. Finally. Yeah. Finally. You remember the old school song? Finally, Finally. it yeah. has happened. <laughs> yeah. that's, okay. what we, that's, what, that's what me and my boy Nate Dogg right. was over here singing because historically, Dallas has always done what? They got in their recliner, Nate, and they did what? They waited for a week. Come on, kick their feet up. At least seven days. At least, right? Wow. And, and they always say what? They always, they always talk about, hey, you know, you know we got to look at the cap. You know, we, we like the way our roster's set. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna address free agency. After you done cut twenty five <laughs> players, we like the way our roster look. <laughs> I don't I, I've never felt that. Okay. You see what you need. Yeah. You see what's available. Because some teams are used free agency to uh go out and get what they really need. Okay. Uh they will wait let free agency fill a need. Correct. Where they can draft what they think they really need right. in the uh, in the draft. Correct. But the Cowboys have always used that as just a stopgap. Mm. 
This year here, I think they did a little different. What do you think changed? And, and before we get into it, I want to know from you, Nate, because you know the front office more than I do, okay? I, 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 I know what I know, but not how they think in those terms. I understand. Yeah, it's it's yeah. changing, Nate. Right. But, like, what do you think is changing their philosophy in terms of how aggressive they were this year? I think the window is closing. For who? For the Cowboys. I mean, four four years ago, it was wide open. Okay. You know, and they had players, especially at the skill position. They, their, their offensive line was in their prime. So things were, were different. Zeke was running hard and slamming up in there. You know, and the defense was still skeptical. Uh-huh. But offensively, they was they was rolling. This now that that is not so. Yeah, that is not so. Uh, you see where you know they they trying to um, change the look of the Cowboys. They okay. trying to they trying to get a new attitude. Yeah, you know and uh, and and so far so good. I so, mean, so so far so good. Now what Nate's alluding to right now, you guys is uh, I think on day two right. they made a big splash. Right, and when we saw the headlines come across, I shot you a call. I was like, yeah. there's no way in the world Dallas is making a move on day two. Right, it's just some some. The fax machine messed up, right? right? They right. had it set for a certain day, and it went out early. I don't know. Right. But either way, I was elated. I was hyped, Nate, when I saw Stephon Gilmore get traded for a low draft pick that it was pretty much free, right? I believe, I, if I'm correct, right. I think it was a draft pick that they received uh, from sending... Um, a, a, one of them compensatory uh, picks. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah, from, from Connor Williams yeah. going down to Miami. Miami right. sent back a fifth-round compensatory, right. compensatory pick, and this was the pick that they used to trade for Gilmore. Wow. And they got, two years ago, the league's best cornerback. Yeah. Easily. Not Easily. Even what he knows up here and what's still left in his legs yeah. is tremendous, man. Ooh. So now you get to insert him. Right. He's a ball hawk. Yeah. Okay, there's only there's there's, there's good cornerbacks, okay? There's aggressive cornerbacks, and then there's ball hawks. Oh, yes, sir. Playmakers. Gil- Gilmore is not necessarily the guy who's going to come up and hit you in the, in the chin. Right. Right? He's not necessarily the, the, always the, the stickiest of coverages, but... He going to do what? Get that ball. He going to get that dog on ball. Yeah. You put it in his area, he going to snag that ball. That's right. What do people say about Trayvon Diggs? They going to get that ball. He going to get that ball. All yeah. right. Well, there's a young fella who just happened to come along last year that they drafted, Ooh, I believe, in yeah. the fifth round. Okay. Uh, Deron Bland. Yeah. All right. He what gonna what is he going to do? Ball. He going to get that he ball. He going to get that ball. So you got yeah. your, if you go out there in a three wide set, mm-hmm. everybody who lines up across from you, their, their, their identity is to go get, get that, that ball. ball. Yeah. <laughs> What is it, tips and overthrows? You got to get those. It's going to cost man. you this year. <laughs> they, it's going to cost. Hey. So, but why is that important? Because Dallas's strength is where? Under defense. defense. That's right. Hey, making plays, getting turnovers. But where, 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 where do they create the most pressure? From the outside. I never thought that dog online. Yeah. Right? You got them goons on the DN, DN position, right? And you got Sam I'm Williams, so Micah hyped, Parsons, D Law. Listen, don't do that. I'm just keeping it 100 I don't know with you. I'm saying, but don't do that. What? Because if you, the only thing you, if you the only thing you can name is defensive ends, that bother me. Hold on, hold on, listen to okay. me. Listen to me. Listen to where I'm going with it though, Nate. <laughs> right. This is where I'm going with it. Wow. Everybody wants to talk about Dan Quinn in regards to what defense that he that he was uh, right. the head of. Mm-hmm. The Legion of Boom. Legion of Boom. Okay. Yeah. What was the recipe for success for the Legion of Boom? Yeah. Real, ball hawks at the cornerback back, position. Yes. And what up front? Sack masters, man. Sack masters. What yeah. do you have right now in Dallas? You got sack masters at the defensive end. You got and in the, on, the, on the back end, you have? Ball. You got ball hawks. Yeah. yeah. It's very Legion of Boom-ish. Just nah, saying, you better get you a, a three technique <laughs> so it can be, so the boom can come. I'm telling you. <laughs> Talk to him, Nate. So, yeah. so, okay, okay, okay. So, so before we get to that, before we get to uh, that, okay. Um, mm. As a matter of fact, let's stay there, okay? Yeah, that was yeah. the defense side of the ball since we're okay. staying on defense. Okay. They, they re-signed Van Der Esch. Okay, that's, that was good move. That was good. Did you like the money? Uh, it could have been I less. Thought, you or know more. what? I honestly thought it, whether whether they were going to get him or Wagner, I thought it was going to be that amount. Okay, okay. okay? Good, I thought that's good, what good. the number was going to be. But I just want to see how you set with that. Yeah, no, yeah, I thought that was going to be the amount. I think right. they could have got Bobby for that too, but I think right. Bobby has more tread on his tires. Right. Um, so Van Der Esch is coming back. Donovan Wilson's coming back. Okay. Um, they got all their they got all their safeties. Okay, for the right. most part. So their safeties are three headed monster at safeties there. Their three headed monster at the cornerback position is there. Um, they got all the defensive ends that you can ever imagine. Okay, but now you go to the interior defensive line, and there's a big dude who came during the season last year by the name of who Nate. 
Uh, Hankins. Big Hankins. Big Hankins. I, I thought you'd sit no. out. Hankins. Hankins. And my yeah. understanding is Hankins is not under contract. Why? Why? It, it, it's, it's words I think you don't use over there. <laughs> don't say, we going to run. It's like all the defense alignment just run run high. All the interior defense alignment like, oh, I'd rather get a sack. Bro, you finna, you ain't, you, you finna ain't be here next year. Yeah, yeah. Because when you say run, uh-huh. everybody run out the door. Mm-hmm. It, it ain't a fire out there. Ain't no, it ain't no fire out there, man. Yeah. Come on now. So so what, what do they need to address now, Nate? They got safeties. They got corners. They got they, address they, interior. They, they got interest interior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got to address the interior, and that, and that's that's big, bro. Cause they have they have penetrating defensive linemen. Yeah. They got, and when we say penetrating defensive linemen, we're talking about guys that get skinny, that get vertical, that get up the field. Okay, on right. pass plays, right. it works to your advantage. Every so often, they'll get in the backfield on a particular run play that will be able to have that's you attack right. them for loss. But if it doesn't go that way, then those guys are just creating larger holes. So, what do you need in the middle, Nate? We need a hog, man. Okay, we need a refrigerator. We need a Mack truck. We need an eighteen wheeler. Yeah, we need something Ooh, that's going to eat up. Quarters. Yeah, we're going to eat up. Yeah, going to eat up blocks, <laughs> man. We need that Good. badly, bro. But they tried to address that last last uh, draft, right? With your boy John Ridgeway. You remember that? Yeah, but we got rid of him. And then he did what? When it's been, he's he's successful with the uh, he's successful with, with D line University. Yeah, D line University. That's yeah. where he's successful. At. Wow, Washington. Wow. Okay, so that's defense. Okay, so let's flip let's flip the script because I we're gonna come back to identity because I, I feel like identity is being created on the defense side of the ball with Dan Quinn. They're giving him what he wants. They have a culture. They have a culture have on the defense culture. side. And and, and all and I, and I and I and I believe this with all my heart that Dan Quinn will find that 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 plugger. Okay. He will find that guy that care more about uh tackling running backs and you know Yeah. Even if, things, even if he yeah. has to change him from offensive line to defensive yeah. line? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, wow. Go ahead on. You, you, yeah, I know. I know you want to get. What are you, where are you, where are you going with this, man? I, I know what you want to say. Go on again. Hey, this team's all about versatility, man. That's what we're getting to. Players that can play multiple roles, multiple positions, can, can provide a lot of value for you. You know, even if they're even if they're free. You know, I'm just anyways, we're gonna move on. Um, they give me the the, the, the stinky eyes right now, y'all, for those that are not watching. Uh let's go to the to the offensive side of the ball. Who's calling the plays this year, Nate? Coach Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. What do we expect? from a Mike McCarthy offense. He said it's going to be the same with maybe 30% variation from him and Kellen Moore. I think he will feel the game okay. more, not only uh, offensively, but he will feel the game. Uh, he, will see, he will see the forest. He'll understand. He can see the trees. Big old redwood okay. offense, big old oak defense. Okay. He can see both trees, but he's going to step back and see the forest. And what I mean by that is he's going to see the rhythm of the game. Okay. So he got He's going to see where the wind blowing. Okay. So he's going to be able to call plays that can affect the whole game in a positive way. I think that that is what he will bring to the to the table is the fact that if he know that he need to score, he going to tell his defense, hey, this is what we need to do. We need a three and out. We need a turnover. Mm-hmm. But – Y'all may be coming right back on the field because we got to score. Or, or we need to slow this down because we got a three to seven point lead or a nine point lead. Yeah. We we need to slow. You know, he going to play okay. the whole game. So he's he's looking at it for holistically. Yeah. So do you think that Kellen Moore was in the wrong for focusing only on offense? That's what his job was, wasn't it? Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, uh, Kellen learned a lot uh, before he left. And he'll probably take this experience and he'll probably take this patience that he had to learn due to Dak getting hurt early. You know, he fell back into that towards the end of the year. But he will learn mm. that, uh, you know, that – well, I, I think he has learned. Let okay. me repeat that. Okay. Uh, patience. And that's what the great play callers have right. is patience. Be able to see the trees – but be able to step back and see the forest, see how the wind blowing, see how the storm is going. Got to have that drone footage. Yeah. Got to have that drone footage. Okay, so uh, offensively, 
Mike McCarthy is on record saying that he wants to do what, Nate? He wants to run the rock. He wants to run the rock. Yeah. And they ran the rock in your in your time, didn't they? Isn't that what you do? Yeah, yeah. Did? We, were, we were pretty successful at that. Yeah. Okay. We, all right. Yeah. What, what was the what was the mentality of your offense as a whole when you guys approached the game? We were just physical. Okay. We wanted to be physical and fast. Yeah, help help the people yeah. understand the physical. Because people hear that term a lot. When as as a as a doggone Hall of Famer in my doggone book, I don't care what the records say. He Hall of right. Famer in the black in the, in the yeah. historical black college. He's Hall of Famer and should be in dog NFL. What does physical mean to a, a, a boss hog offensive lineman? Well, not People get it confused a lot of times. You can be physical and be a passing team. Okay. Depending on what pat we, we did a lot of three and five step drops. Okay. Quick sets. Early in games, you know, because teams may have tried to take away the run. So we'd get a five step drop, a, a three step drop just to get some type right. of rhythm. But being physical means that you're finishing everything to the whistle. Okay. Sometimes a step past the whistle. So is that nasty? You know, that just being nasty, okay. just, you know, just grabbing a dude. You know, like a lot of times, what I always tried to do as a as an offensive line is I wanted to finish with a dude close up on me. Mm. You know, uh, even, even if he bull, if he passed and bull me back, and I stop him and hold him up, yeah. he I wasn't gonna let him go into the whistle blew. When the whistle blew, I was gonna bring him to me and just look at him. What, what, what would that tell him? What, what did you yeah, want him to letting know? Letting him know that I won. Ooh. I'm in control of this. Yeah, and so. For me, that, that's what it was about. And as the game went on, I was going to roll you. Okay. Eventually, I was going to roll you. I, I, I've never went a whole game unless it was against Reggie White, yeah. somebody of that ilk, where I just couldn't get you on your back a couple of times in a game. Yeah. And that's my goal. And I think that, that young guy we got, uh, Ty, Tyler Smith, yep. I think that's his goal. Just one or two times a game, if I can get you on your, on your back, yeah. I'll, I'll I shove you over a pile. However, I get you there. Yeah. I get you there. So you want to own that person? Yeah. What do you want them to be thinking every time they line up? Nate? When they line up, I don't want them concentrating on my quarterback or my running back. I, I, down in distance, I, by the, by the second quarter, and Eric Williams taught me this. Okay. Big E. Big E. By the second quarter, I don't want you thinking down in distance. I want you thinking how I'm gonna get this dude off of me. You know, I want you to go to the sideline and tell the coach, hey, man, I need to, we need to run some stunts, some games. I need to go the direction. We need to. Uh, yeah. How can I beat this guy? How can I beat this guy? Because he owned me. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a different. Yeah, mindset, that's, that's, that's physical, man. Yeah. Michael Irvin was physical. He, he believed that, you know, if he had a, a special a great corn on him, he would like to get into him and run block him a couple yep. of times. You know, he 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 like, hey man, we need to run the ball. I need to get on this dude because if he can get into you, he can take away your aggressiveness to jam him yeah. in, in certain uh, past situations. Because you don't know. Because we we'll, we would run uh, our third and five. We would sometimes we would run depending on where we was at on the field just yeah. to throw you off. And so Mike, you think Mike finna go on a quick slant or something? You up. And he up in your face, jacking you up. Yeah. So. You know, I that's like what it. our physical meant. Ah, I to like finish. it. Finish. Okay, to finish. so so that was y'all's philosophy back in the yeah. day. Okay, do you think that Mike McCarthy, with his new hire, new old hire, okay, right. and you can you can fill in the people yeah. on what that is. Do you think that's what he's trying to get back to? Yeah, and, well, but Coach Solari is is an old school coach. Uh, he was he's with y'all, I think, okay. with the uh, Seahawks. He's he's he believe in being physical. He believe in uh, in, in five guys. Five guys, six guys being your main rotation. Okay. And getting back to, to, to road grading. Uh, and I don't know if these five guys will stay healthy. Uh, Tyron Smith, Ty, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Smith, Biotish, uh, Zach right. Martin, and Steele. I have reservations because one guy's coming off a major injury. Other guy has not played more than eight games or ten games in the last four or five seasons, and and my center is average. He's a hard worker. I love him. Yep. But he's a, he's an average guy, and I don't know if my left guard can truly be a left guard, a left guard because I know he can truly be a left, left tackle. tackle. Correct. You know, so Correct. I, I just want to see what Coach Solari, Mike Solari, gonna do with these five guys. I'm looking forward to it as well. So with that said. Dallas offensively did not go out and sign the offensive lineman, but they went out and added another weapon at the receiver position in that of Brandon Cooks, the speed demon himself. 
the man who I think has what seven one thousand yard or six one thousand yard seasons out of nine seasons, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's a beast. He's a beast. All right. Uh, he's wanted to come here for a while now. Matter of fact, so much so he thought the deal was going to get done by the trade deadline last year, right. and they just sat him down and paid the man twenty million dollars. Right. They said, don't even, don't even don't even come to the facility. Don't do nothing. We're just going to pay you twenty million dollars to sit there. Right. Right. That's how. That's how bad that boy wanted to come here to Dallas. Yeah, deal. He was disappointed the deal didn't get done last year. They were asking, I believe, for a third round pick or a second round pick for him. Uh, Dallas ended up giving them a fifth. The thing about Brandon Cooks, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I heard that we're going to more more of the West Coast style of doing things, where everything is about time. Yep, and shorter timing. What routes. about was New England that way, that mm. playbook that you they? No, New England was was whew, was a different. Okay, so I gave wrong information. Seattle, Seattle was more that way. Okay, right, right. Run the ball, short, quick passes, slants, spacing concepts, bunch of concepts, really quick, easy uh, reads for the quarterback, okay. high precision passes. The thing that is, I, I gave wrong information okay. yesterday on another show. Uh, I'll go back and correct that. The thing that when I was a part of that briefly with the Carolina Panthers, my one year with them, is they came to the line and they had a play that automatically just changed. If you like you was going to blitz them, what I'm trying to say is these guys, and Brandon Cook is this guy, he's been in so many different organizations, so many different that he can play in any. Yep. But our guys that we have, can they play? Can they adjust? Because Dak had a slight interception problem last year. You can't take that into this year. Nope. You cannot, and I'm speaking to Dak mm-hmm. and whoever's listening, You that is not an excuse. That, that hurts your team last year. So don't throw interceptions. And the offense that you're in – Everything's have to be decided much quicker. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna have a chance to sit there and see if a guy gonna get open. You got to know he open. You got to know this guy know what he's doing. Am I correct? No, you're absolutely correct. So I don't want to hear that this year. I hear that. I'm with you. Yeah, but I will say this: we ain't going no further with that offensive line going. Woo! That's so, with Brandon Cooks. That's with yeah. Uh, you gotta have all the skill positions yeah. you want. Yeah. All right. So Nate, you the you the GM. Okay, you're Will McClay slash right. Jerry Jones, whatever, whoever wants to get the title. What do you do with pick 26? There's only three three things you can do. And I know that uh, a defensive lineman is out of the picture. Please don't. Uh, that, I know that is out of the picture. I oh. know a defensive tackle is out of the picture. The only thing you can do with that, that, that 26 pick mm-hmm. is offensive lineman, mm-hmm. offensive lineman, <laughs> our tight end. Oh no, Nate. We're not doing yeah. tight end again, Nate. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, Nate. They 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 say this for the first time in a very long time. These guys that are up, you know, Kyle Yeoman, your 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 yeah. guy who works on your show, our teammate mm-hmm. on the weekend shows, uh Brian Brothers, uh all the all the all the experts, yeah. They say this is the tight end class. Ta- man. Tight end university. I can't know, Nate. No. If they can block. No, Nate. If they can block. No. All you can do is get an offensive lineman at 1A, 1B offensive lineman. I agree. 1C, get a tight end. I don't agree with your C. Yeah. I like 1A, 1B. You know. What, what, do you, what do you have to say to people? Look, I want you to look right in that camera. And everybody who's talking about the young man, it was a B- Bjorn. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't right. want to butcher it. But right. young man out of Texas, running back. They said if he falls to 26, he do- done fail. Let him keep falling. <laughs> <laughs> he done fail. Let him keep falling. So some people, some people. If he done fail, let him keep falling. Some people's philosophy. No, no, ain't no. If he done fail, <laughs> let him keep falling. So don't take a running back at Come 26. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm just saying. Some people are looking at Tony Parker saying you don't know if he's going to be the same guy. But you shouldn't have franchised him. It's a one year deal. 
So you shouldn't have franchise. They say if you have ability to to draft a franchise running back, he's sitting right there. That's what people say, Nate. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just throwing it out there because that's Is what people talk about. These same people that say during the Super Bowl when they see two uh, Super Bowl teams with less than five millions in their running back. Come on, man. If you're going to adapt that that theory, adapt that theory. Mm. But if you're going to pay guys more than what you, you know, you you paying Tony, you we can get we can get not we can get. We can get Philadelphia's running backs, and we can get uh, Kansas City running backs and put them on our team and still be up under what we paying. They signed Ronald Jones? I, I'm with that. Okay. I'm with that. So why do you need the kid in Texas? I don't think you do. Okay. All right, yeah. Let him keep do. falling. I don't think Let him fall right on where he going to fall at. So O-line, 1A? 1A. 1B. 1B, and a tight end. And if you want to go... Way out there. If you want to reach, Don't do this if next. you want to reach, get a linebacker. If you want to okay. go way okay. out there, okay. if you want to reach, get a linebacker. Okay. I know they ain't getting a deal. If they get a Divas and lineman, I may run over there <laughs> and be at the press conference. I may walk right. I'm say, I may run over there. You're going to retract oh, And I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> what the heck I'm are y'all gonna, doing? What, what, what took y'all so long <laughs> to get a Divas and tackle? We let the big naughty from yo they drafted one last year, Nate. With the eighth round, they drafted one last year. He's starting. Who? Ridgeway. For who? Not Dallas. He wasn't good enough to play here. But he's good enough to play on the front, the front line for the Washington Commanders. Oh, jeez, don't do that. <laughs> All right, don't we're going to this thing. Hey, we got to get up out of here, and they go beat me up, y'all. <laughs> hey, listen up. Y'all just got some a wealth of knowledge. Dallas is trying to change the identity of their team. Yes, they are. We just talked about offense. We talked about defense. We just talked about this front office. Things are different this year. We are not going to sit up here and say, oh, Super Bowl. We're not going to do that. But what Nate and I can sit up here and tell you is that the approach is changing. And I'm going to tell you another thing, man. I'm so glad Coach McCarthy is calling plays. I am so glad that we have Dan Quinn. And I'm glad that we went out and got Coach Solari. Now, we went out and got other coaches. But Coach Solari, at the end of this year, in about six, about ten weeks, I'm going to be giving you an update on him. Because by that time, I've been on met him, yep. been on hugged him, yep. you know, and, uh, and, and just see what he's thinking. For sure. Yeah. All right, there you have it, man. Um, y'all, that's another episode in the books, y'all, for what? Let me tell you something. What you got, Nate? Niagara. Thank you. <laughs> we'll flush another one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Niagara. I tell everybody that joke. Everybody be trying to go back and get them episodes, man. Oh, God.